Hello, everybody, and welcome to the live stream. Hello, everybody, welcome to the live stream. Um, I'm not sure how many people will be around here, but if you're re watching this uh, live stream after it's been completed, then I know that it's very, very long, and basically, bunch of people we gather up and then we have sort of a meeting and we discuss on the chat room that's on YouTube and just hang around and talk about pale foundations and correctors and whatever so for today I thought that I'll be demonstrating a bit about correctors for pale skin and as well as talking about some of the new foundations that there are out there and um, possibly also the rest of the pre-sale for the pale foundations that I have so I have like a big box down here and there are a lot of foundations that I still need to sell so anyways um I'll probably be waiting for a little bit until other people show up and then I'll just start get going, I guess. I think we can get started maybe I don't know how many people were supposed to come but anyways um, you can always rewatch the previous thing although nothing really happened but I'll I think I'll start I don't want to waste your time <laughs> So I thought I'll be going over a little bit about some foundation whiteners because I know that it can be quite problematic to find um, a good um, kind of not really uh, a lotion to thin out the foundation but more to um, lighten the pigment present in the foundation so yeah I have several options here so I'll be going from the highest pigmentation to the lowest pigmentation so um, those options I have more but I picked the options that you can find and aren't discontinued because it would be a little bit stupid if I would talk about some product that it's not made anymore so yeah um, there will be different categories I'm trying to gather them all up mm -mm. here's another one so there will be high pigment lighteners and then there will be very very low pigment lighteners so let's start with the high pigment one one and after we're done with this then I'll show you a little bit how to use correctors for different problems and concerns when you have very pale skin and then we'll go with the new foundations and the foundation pre-sale if that works for you guys okay so one of the probably the easiest 
to access if you have access to Mac or you can order from Mac or probably you can even find on eBay. I'm not really sure about that, but I would assume it's the easiest to find is the Mac full coverage in white. Now this is how it says or what it says it's pure white paste. Now this is similar to the clown white that you can find in any um, what are they called those shops? Um, not the makeup artist shop, but the costume shops or you know for Halloween or whatever they tend to have white paste. The different is that difference is that with this it's not so bad for your skin as those uh, clown white paste thingies and um, yeah, so this is basically, it is a foundation. It's not meant to be used as, um, I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> I think I'm not really making sense here. Yeah, it's something like the Cryoline White Clown, except that this has more good benefits for the skin, if that makes sense. It also has SPF 30 and whatnot. Anyways, this is what it looks like. This is, as you can see, it's like, pure white pigment it's white paste now this can be thinned out very very much as to only brighten the skin or you can layer it in order to have like really clown face but this one is very good if you have cream foundations or um thicker cream foundations or stick foundations that you need to lighten or it's also good as a highlighter because let's face it if you're very very pale highlighters are going to be almost impossible to find especially cream highlighters so this is a good option it's also a good option to create your own concealer for example you can mix some pink uh, lipstick with this and you have your own corrector concealer type of thing so this has a lot of uses. I don't personally reach out for this very often because it requires, well, a little bit more work and blending to get it to look right. So there you have it. Um, again, extremely full coverage. You can cover anything with this formula. So this is the MAC full coverage in white. Um, the MAC face and body in white, you can order it online from the US uh, or you can get it in the pro stores in US. Uh, you cannot get it in regular counters. They don't sell the white because it is a professional product as well as this one. So both of these are meant for professionals, but you don't have to have any professional card or license or anything to buy them so you can actually order it online um, the next yeah is the Mac face and body white this is a very very generous bottle 120 ml or four fluid ounce so unless you're someone who's painting their whole body you will never get through this entire bottle I've well my last bottle lasted me for I don't know, six, seven years. <laughs> it was really, really long time and I had given away half of it. So um, this one is on the sheer side of things. Um, it comes like in a dropper thingy. It's actually very convenient because you can really measure the quantity that you want to have out. And as you can see, it's very, very light. Um, you can, for example, just brighten your skin and with this formula, what it does is that, I believe this is silicone free. I'm, I'm not sure, don't quote me on that, but uh, you cannot, for example, mix this. I don't remember if it was with silicone or without silicone foundations, it, one of them. 
it wouldn't be really wise to mix it because the formula is so different. So basically, if you have a, a foundation that has a lot of silicones, you want to stick with a lightener that has silicones. And the same thing applies if a foundation doesn't have any silicones. This is, again, water resistant. And it will resist sweat. It will resist uh, high temperatures. Um, this was actually used in the movie by M. Night Shyamalan, or Shyamalan, um, The Lady in the Water. They actually lightened her body with this foundation in order to achieve that almost translucent skin look. So they basically buffed this into her entire body. Um, again, it sets to a it's not matte and it's not satin it's just skin finish it doesn't have any particular finish itself so if you want to have more dewiness you would have to prepare your skin with a primer to achieve that dewy look if you want more of a matte look you will have to prepare your skin and then powder it this isn't very good if you have extremely oily skin it will just melt off because this comes off with uh, oil base remover um it has a beautiful sort of citrus scent to it and basically this i know that a lot of people use it to lighten other foundations but i personally am not that fan to use this product to lighten foundations that have a lot of pigmentation because this is sheer but buildable but if you mix it up with another foundation let's say let me grab a foundation quickly okay so let's say i have the the your star and i want to lighten this foundation so i would grab this much just for a demonstration and i'll show you also with the mac full coverage uh, what you can achieve with this. So let's say I want to achieve a half tone or one, sorry, one tone lighter or like slightly more. Um, oh my goodness, I seem to have left all my brushes. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to mix it up with this. So. The Dior Star has a lot of pigmentation. And as you can see, it thins it out very much. Like this MAC face and body will thin out any foundation that you use, except if you use it with the MAC face and body N1 or C something. With those, you will maintain the same amount of pigmentation and you'll be able to layer them because this is meant to be a layer layerable foundation so you first apply your first layer let it uh, set and then you apply the second and so on in order to build the coverage but if you're mixing it straight with a foundation uh, you won't be able to do that trick of building the coverage so basically you're stuck with one layer of uh, that mac, mac face and body and then basically it sort of removes a lot of the pigmentation of the Dior Star because basically it's like you're diluting high pigmentation thick formula with a tinted moisturizer that's white so you're removing pigmentation if you don't need coverage then that's great it's um um you won't really have a lot of problem Another thing to consider also is that every time you're mixing a foundation with a lightener, you will change the properties of your foundation. So what I mean by that is that if you're having, let's say you need really a lot of oil control and then you use something like this, which isn't really good for oil control, you will lose a lot of that oil controlling property. You will actually mix it with half with something that might actually make your skin more oily. 
if you don't really have any concerns, if you have, let's say, normal skin, slightly dry skin, or just normal to combination, then it's really no problem. But if you have like very dry skin or very oily skin, you might want to really make sure that the lightener that you're using with your foundation also has the same properties as your foundation. Now, with the MAC Full Coverage Foundation, this one, again, if you have very oily skin, you will need to set it heavily because it is a cream based foundation and no matter how well you prepare your skin it will basically make your face slightly oilier that's reality so i've grabbed a little bit of the mac full coverage and i'm gonna do again the same trick with the dior star i'm using roughly same amounts it doesn't have to be exactly as you can see the mac full coverage gives much more pigmentation and it slightly thickens your foundation so it is whereas this one removed pigmentation and uh diluted the foundation this one added pigmentation and thickened the foundation so basically with this one you will able to lighten way more your foundation than with the MAC uh, face and body so here we go again same thing and I have applied roughly the same amount but as you can see with the MAC full coverage I've applied less of the full coverage in terms of uh, like area uh, surface area of product but I've been able to lighten the foundation way more while keeping a lot of the pigmentation so as you can see this one is much sheerer than this one this is just pure pigment so that's something you might want to keep in mind when thinking about which uh, foundation liner to purchase because it will make a really big difference on whether it will be useful for you or not so yeah um, again these two I would say they are very good to have in hand they are um, mm, the easiest to use or to manipulate than the others that I'm going to show now but nevertheless, I know that they might be harder to obtain unless you, 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 know, you can order from the pro store or go to a pro store. So, moving on to the next one. And again, I'm keeping with the Dior Star uh, foundation for now because, well, we started with this one and this is uh, relatively dark for my skin tone, so you'll be able to see more. Um, you'll be able to see the difference. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, so the next one, which this one might be actually easier to obtain. I don't know which one. I mean, probably depends where you live. This is the Ilamasqua Cream Foundation. Ilamasqua is very good because they make two or three different formulas with white pigmentation. So they make the compact, they make a sort of uh, cream, like a very thick cream. And then I believe they make a lighter one, um, like a lighter consistency one. I'm not really sure exactly if they have changed formulas, but I do know that they have the compact and that uh, richer um, based one like cream it resembles something like this and this one is uh, I can't really find a color right now but it's I think RF 105 anyways at the, in the Ilamasca website you will see the white base one it's either 105 or uh, 100 either way you will know uh, it says that it's white with pink base 
I'm, I'm not really sure. I can't see the, well, it's, it's an off white, but basically it's white. So I'm going to take a little bit of this. So this much, and I'm going to apply the same amount. Now, this is very, very comparable to the Mac, uh, full coverage. Actually, I'm going to show you a swatch. So there we have this one. And uh, the Mac full coverage in white. There you go. As you can see, the Mac full coverage white is more of a clown white. It has more blue undertones. The uh, Ilamasqua one has more pink undertones. It says that it's a pink. Um, a white with pink undertones which is correct for a white one it has a lot of pink undertones so it really depends also what is your the foundations that you mainly want to lighten what are their undertones would it really bother if you apply one that has really really stark white under um, base or would it be better if you would apply one that's more of a pink undertone the pink undertone is easier to manipulate because it already has that skin color to it uh illa Masque is from uk and last time i checked they ship worldwide so it shouldn't be really a problem to acquire the products and they are relatively affordable um i want to say maybe slightly cheaper than the mac full coverage um but again, in the Mac full coverage, you get, you get way more. So this is like almost an ounce of product. And this is eight grams, which is uh, one third of an ounce or something like that. But anyways, the Lamasqua should be relatively easy to get. So, yeah, I'm going to show you the Lamasqua with the Your Skin Star. So I'm applying roughly this amount and mixing them. Again, I'm not sure if you can see, but the uh, pigmentation is conserved. It's also very thick because again, it's a cream based with a thicker formula foundation. And now I'm going to swatch it for you guys I'm not sure if you can tell the difference sorry but with the Ilamasqua one you conserve more of pink undertones so it doesn't appear as artificial or as bright as the Mac full coverage white so that's why I was saying that maybe this would be a better idea for everyday use rather than the Mac full coverage because it is a clown white and it can easily look ashy in pictures therefore this might be a better option uh, to not look as I don't as maybe yeah ashy and powdery overall so that's the result another option that i have i'm gonna remove this ones is cheaper one um i don't know how easily attainable is Probably if you live in the UK, it's very easy. And some top shop might have this brand. And I would say that eBay, you can find this. So this is the foundation cream by Berry M. And it's in the shade either 1 or 243. I'm not really sure. But it's the white one. Now this, I'm not really fond of it. But if you're on a budget and that's all you can find, you can make it work. This is a, I don't know to show now. Sorry, let me blend it better. Now, 
No, the MAC one doesn't have green at all. It has more of a almost pure white. So um, I can't really tell blue undertones, but if you are mixing this with North Siberia, I was thinking if I have the North Siberia. I only have the North Siberia Firming Foundation, which is totally different undertone from the regular Siberia, which is, that one is discontinued. It had like very strong pink, on, pink undertones. Um, but maybe it would actually give more of an olive undertone if you would mix this with uh, the current North Siberia, which is very, very yellow. So maybe you would be able to achieve that. At best, you would be able to achieve a brighter North Siberia with this. With the Lamasqua, you would add pink undertones. So I wouldn't say, I wouldn't recommend that one. Let's see. So back to the Barry M. Um, as you can see, it is a cream consistency. It doesn't have that much coverage, but it is higher coverage than the MAC face and body. Um, if I mix it with the Dior Star, it dilutes it because the Or Star has more pigmentation and is thicker. You can see there it's like runnier. And now let's swatch it here. It's as you can see it has more translucency when you use it with the Bari M. The Bari M also, I mean it's it is a drugstore formula. I don't know how good it is um, to preserve the, let's say if you're mixing it with Dior Star, would the Dior Star look as good? That I cannot say because I haven't done it on my face. I should probably try it. Um, but again, if you're on a budget or you cannot find the other ones and that's the only option you can find, it's better than nothing. And it's good to have this in hand because you can lighten foundations. The Barry M, it doesn't really have an undertone. It's just white. It's not as... Um, it's wider than the MAC face and body because the MAC face and body has, I want to say, maybe very, very, very light, uh, warm undertone for white. This has more of a cool undertone for white, if that makes sense. The final one for the higher pigmentation ones are, again, this is from Mac Pro. And I'm sorry, I don't really have any other options for this kind besides Mac Pro because they tend to have really good uh, liners. Yeah, Muffy just came actually. He was on his nap time. Now he's eating. <laughs> so this is the Mac Paint Stick Paint Oh my god, paint stick, what the, paint stick in white, or pure white. This is more of special effects makeup. So, whereas this one is more foundation, this is more grease paint, if that makes sense. So, it's a stick foundation. Now, this is very good if you have um, very dark under eye darkness oh my gosh I'm, I'm really being redundant here <laughs> very dark under eyes or you need to light in a concealer or another trick that's actually learned from a Japanese makeup artist is that if you have uh, if you're very pale and you have 
uh, acne marks. Yeah, that very dark under eye circles. Yeah, I was. I, I don't know what's wrong. <laughs> I just keep thinking, and then I nope. I don't remember it. Yeah, if you have acne marks or red blemishes, what you want to do is apply this in order to basically wipe off or uh, mask that uh, redness instead of using green correctors and then applying concealer on top. Yeah, I'm missing my coffee. Actually, I haven't had coffee today. I'm having chai latte here and... And I mean, chai latte doesn't doesn't have enough caffeine for me, so I think that's that's the reason I haven't had coffee today. So yeah, I'm gonna show you later on the trick on the actual blemishes. Oh, now that I remember, actually, when thinking about this, Maybelline has released or has released a while ago uh, white sticks. So if you're able to buy Maybelline, check on the concealer. You know, they look like lipsticks with the clear cap on. They have like concealing colors and then there is a white one. You might want to check the white one because it's high pigmentation and you can just like spot correct or uh, lighten wherever you need to. Because like I was saying last week that if you have very prominent uh, blue or green under your eyes, you want to use a strong corrector. Now, if you're very pale and you apply a concealer on top of that, it will look dark. It, it won't have done its job. So therefore, you want to have something like a white stick to apply on top of the corrector, blend it well, and then apply the um, concealer on top of that. Yeah, actually, I should try red tea. I... Or maybe I have red tea because I have many teas, but I'm not really a tea person. Like this is a pre-made mix, uh, like sugar-free concentrate that you put with milk. Um, yeah, so again, good stick. I'm going to show you, for example, with um, Boy Brown Skin Foundation in porcelain. So here we have the porcelain one. And then if I add a bit of the white, so I can like, the good thing with this is that I can tailor how much I want to lighten. So there we go. Like it has, you just um, dab or swipe and you can see instantaneously how much it's lightening. So. This is, oh yeah, true, Shu and Mora used to have those white sticks back, I don't know how long ago. I haven't found them anymore. And um, Cryoline, Cryoline, I know that they used to make that because they are basically stage makeup. Yeah, I think it's very good if you have like a stick um, foundation you want to lighten or as a spot corrector, in that sense that you want to lighten a certain area before concealing it because sometimes it can be so that when you're applying straight concealer it might look like some kind of dark blob especially if you're you know very fair and you can see like the veins and the redness and whatnot the fairer you are the more you can see like the uh, under the skin coloration so it tends this fairer skins tend to look more translucent than if you would have more pigment so that's why often it can look like some kind of a blob or you know like it's evident that you've applied concealer basically that's what i wanted to say <laughs> okay so the next one are aren't necessarily lighteners like they don't really have that much pigment but whoops sorry for that noise they are more of brighteners so it's good for a foundation if you have a foundation that's just a little bit too dark 
or it's not bright enough or it's too sallow or dull you can use one of these so i'm gonna start with the uh, giorgio armani fl flute sheer this one is in the shade one they used to make a white one now i'm not sure if they still have the white one if they have a white one that actually can lighten the foundation a bit more than this one because this is more of a champagne almost pink uh, um, skin tone so i'm gonna show you what it looks like let's see if it's possible to show it there so it's very sheer and it has sort of a let me get up sort of um, a sheen to it so there we go not sure if you can tell but it's slightly shimmery and it has yellow undertone so if you need to add more yellow undertones and brighten a little bit your foundation this is a good option i'm going to actually show you with the the Earth star which i'm going to just put an amount here and this so first i'm going to swatch the base so this is the Giorgio Fluid Sheer in one. And and this is the Dior Star. Now it has lightened the Dior Star considerably. If you take the base color, as you can see, it does lighten it. But um, well, they have. That's the thing. I think they do sell now the fluid sheer in one. So you might no, sorry, in white. I'm not sure what's the color. Uh, the one that I sold was the face fabric which is really a silicone type so you wouldn't be able to mix it with many foundations besides one that would have high silicone content but the fluid sheer you can mix it with many different foundations so you might want to check i might put the link when this is done i'll put the link to the white one which i believe it's still available um it will shear out the pigmentation because this although it's very pigmented for a uh like mixer type of thing it it's not as pigmented as the mac full coverage one so this adds a as you can see it adds a good amount of brightness and uh almost dewiness to the skin and you can lighten maybe one one tone one and a half tones with this uh fluid sheer in number one next one is the cledipo and this one is a luminizing enhancer base this has a little bit more pigmentation that the than the fluid sheer so you can see it's white let me swatch it here it has a lot of white component it's very white i would say um it has slightly it's pearlescent so it's not as let's say this this is this doesn't have any shimmery or sh or uh, like sparkliness or anything to it this actually has a little bit because it's meant to be like a highlighter but if you mix it with the foundation which is something that i've been doing this is supposedly to be a base but i've always mixed it with a foundation i prefer it that way so
So this is the uh, Dior Star mixed with the Clé de Peau, and this is the original Dior Star. There you go. So it does considerably lighten and it holds the pigmentation the best from all the luminizers that I'm about to show. So if you want something that adds uh, a lum luminous glow to your foundation plus lightens your foundation, then the Clé de Peau uh, luminizing tint, luminizing whatever enhancer, it's good. Um, I will warn though, this is very pricey so <laughs> you might want to be sure that it's worth that price for the foundation that you're going to be using on i actually bought that to um test it out with the clé de peau foundation so i don't normally use it with other foundations because i don't know i'm not sure it's worth <laughs> the price but um yeah, if you have, if you like Clé de Peau foundations, they have really, really good ones, really, really good ones. And if you like the foundations, but they are slightly too dark for your skin tone, then you might want to think about that uh, lighter base. Okay, I'm gonna put it there. The next one is the Sensai Brightening Makeup Base. Now, a lot of makeup bases you can actually use them to lighten your foundation. So pretty much all of those that I have here that are sheer are makeup bases that seem to do a very good job when wanting to uh, sheer out a foundation. So this is the makeup base from um, Sensai. As you can see, this doesn't really have a lot of pigmentation. This is just mainly to brighten a foundation. So it can maybe lighten half a tone. It adds a boost to your foundation. It adds a radiance to your foundation. Um, and luminizing face enhancer. From Sensai or from uh, Clé de Peau? Which one it is? Oh yeah, is the Clé de Peau thing that you're referring to, I think. Uh, this one is the Tent Control Blanc, so it's supposedly the white one. Uh, Chanel also makes a white um, base, which actually I've mixed with foundations, and they are it's perfectly fine to do with it. So... Um, yeah, so this is just the slight boost, a little bit brighter, but you can't really affect a lot of the uh, foundation with this product. Another one, this is not as, it's not white base, it's more skin type of color, is the Dior Glow Maximizer Light Boosting, well, Light Boosting Primer. So let me show you what it looks like there. So this basically adds sort of like a champagne glow to any foundation that you want. It smells very good. I have to smell everything that I'm trying on. I don't know why. Uh, you have the Chanel one, the white one, Le Blanc. Uh, the white one, you just uh, mix it like take a plate or in the back of your hand and you apply it um, either equal parts or uh, one third of that Le Blanc to two thirds of the foundation depending how much pigmentation you want to conserve and it should do a pretty good job. Uh, this one again it's just to add this kind of sheen glow type of thing. You can use it on its own as well. Um, it might darken a bit your skin tone, but I don't think it should be that significant. I mean, if you spread it, of course, there. Maybe it adds warmth. So this, if you want to add glow and a little bit of warmth. Oh, 
Oh, I don't know what's happening actually. That's weird. Okay, sure thing. Oh my goodness, I've already rambled for 45 minutes. <laughs> Anyways, this would give a good warmth to the skin. If you're pale, of course. Then um, another one that, that was talked about last week and is the Shuemura uh, UV Underbase Brightening Mousse from the White Efficients. This is a very, very good brightener. But this you cannot mix with any foundation, so this you have to apply first. But because it brightens so much, whatever foundation you apply on top will appear slightly lighter when you use this. You want to come say hello? Okay. You want to say hello? Do you say hello? Yeah, I know. You're a handsome boy, aren't you? Aren't you? Yeah, you're a small dinosaur. You want to go back? No? You don't want to go back? Let's see. There we go. Say hello. Say hello. No? Okay. You want to go on my shoulder? Okay. He's a little bit camera shy now. Normally he isn't, but oh well. <laughs> he hasn't felt like singing too much. He has been singing the whole morning. See, she told you you're pretty. Mm, whatever. <laughs> Another one, this probably you can find on eBay or <laughs> best accessory. Yeah, he's like an accessory. <laughs> That's true. He's usually when I'm typing or uh, writing or something, he's on my ring, so it's like a, you know, live ring. Right, Mav? Okay, whatever. So yeah, this is the uh, skin, uh, Saint Tropez skin illuminator, and it's in the violet one. So this is you can probably find it on eBay because it's discontinued, but I've seen it around the internet for not very expensive. So this is basically sort of like white, but it has a lavender violet undertone. So it's supposed to be a highlighter, but I think that this would be actually pretty good to mix with some foundations or if you want to just brighten your you know wherever your body you want to use it for but i thought i would throw that in there what are you doing he's doing something you're cleaning me Okay, fine. Do whatever. Moving on to some powders. I hope this isn't getting too excessively long. I'm sorry. I I know that I'm the probably the slowest slowest person ever for videos when I don't edit them. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so this was the powder that I was talking about last week. Oh my gosh, where are you going? Come here. Bye. <laughs> this is the... Um, I'm not sure if I actually showed it last week, but it's from Chanel, and it's the Poudre Douce in the shade 30, Rosé. And this is sort of like a setting powder, but it has some kind of... Um, luminizing effect to it so it's very similar to the mac 
mineralized skin finish or the hourglass ambient powders or that type of uh, finish and it has a slight brightening pink undertone to it so it's almost white I don't know if I can swatch that almost white but it adds a lot of glow to your skin so if you have for example a problem that your foundation looks good when you apply it but after an hour it sort of darkens a little bit or it becomes too sallow or dull you might want to actually try with um, this kind of powder on top or the a Guerlain Meteorite's uh, Pastel White. I'm not sure if you can see that. Let me show you. I've had this for a long while. Like, these Meteorites never finish. But anyways, there it is. Whoops. Huh. Well, one ball went there. Um, so this has like pastel lavender, pastel yellow, pa white, pastel green, pastel pink. And basically this will slightly lighten and brighten the face. Look, this is the effect. Pastel white is an Asian exclusive, but you should be able to find it online because that's where I got mine. <laughs> uh, this one... Uh, I want to say that it's at least five years old. That's why I wouldn't sell it. <laughs> but it's, um, yeah, five years old or something like that. Um, but it was part of the regular collection. So I think that you, somewhere in the internet, you should be able to find this. Sorry, I want to grab the little bead. And again, a lot of the products that I show aren't products that you might find that easy in stores because, again, um, when you're very, very pale, the things get harder and um, you might have to work a little bit more to find some uh, good things that actually do work for pale skin. Now, in terms of highlighters, In terms of the highlighters that are very, very brightening for pale skin, is one of them is my all-time favorite, is from Vanilla Co. I believe this is Korean brand. Yeah, it's a Korean brand. It's the Secret Marble Blusher. Let's see. And it's, there you go, 04 Scandalist, the shade. It comes with a brush, but I actually lost the brush. So this is what it looks like, and it is sort of a baked um, thingy, <laughs> baked powder. Uh, it smells, it has a very strong, I want to say baby powder type of scent. So if you're very sensitive to scents, then maybe this wouldn't work. I mean, for me doesn't bother me because once it's applied it doesn't smell so it just smells when the thing packaging opens on the other side you have like a mirror which is cute and let's see if I can actually show here can you see that let me put here so this really ha adds a lot of um, white glow to your skin but it also has this kind of mix of um, like small specks of colors in there so it it's not as harsh as a white shimmery highlighter it's more of a skin tone type of highlighter it really blends well into the skin and it just gives a glow the shade it's 04 scandalist there you go. Um, no, it's not a champagne color. It looks champagne, but once you apply on the, on the skin, it looks more of a pearl type of color, a little bit silvery, that makes sense. And the other one, this is that's more of a cheaper option because it's more of a, I think, similar to Etude, which is another Korean brand. 
and this is more of a expensive -er, I'm, I'm just making words here <laughs> more expensive option and it's the clay de Peau luminizing face enhancer in shade 11 this is what it looks like now this is really 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 cool undertone as you can see because it has pastel blue um pastel lavender some off white and then a slightly slightly pastel peach let's see if i can actually show you oh, offline. oh it's vanilla expensive okay i don't i don't remember because it was sent to me and i always assumed that it was cheap because of the packaging <laughs> but apparently i'm wrong i didn't know because well i assume that it's cheaper than the clear pool because you can't i mean i don't know if there is any more expensive than this and i didn't buy this i got it as a gift i i i probably wouldn't be able to buy that thing <laughs> but anyways this is what it looks like and let's see if there is a good spot to use uh, there there you go i mean it has less sheen than the vanilla as you can see this is the vanilla it's a very high beam kind of sheen and this is more of a toned down toned down version it's very soft focus type of highlighter so this is this looks good under artificial lights it's very beautiful but it's not very good like for daily use because you can't really see it that much especially during daylight you can't really see it so this much like if you're going out or you have an event or something like that it's very very good yes it's more than hundred dollars that's why i wouldn't buy it although i want to say that the refills are way cheaper so if you aren't interested in the packaging and you're okay with just product the refill is much more reasonable priced so i've rambled one hour on this highlighter and whiteners that's just impressive how much i can talk <laughs> Another thing that I want to mention if you want to brighten your face or remove sallowness is to use a or use sunscreens that people would say that you it will make you look like a ghost. That's another option. Um, one that I've been liking on days that I don't want to have any makeup but i still want to have some brightness on the face is the drunk elephant umbra sheer physical defense so this is just pure zinc oxide so this will make your face uh, slightly ghostly if you wish oops i'm gonna show you what i mean so as you can see this is just stark white um thankfully this one is sheer but you can see it gives that little bit of a brightness so this is good if again if you're very pale and you don't want to use any tinted moisturizers because maybe there aren't pale enough or you just feel like you don't want to wear anything but your sunscreen then get a very high spf mineral sunscreen that will probably match your skin and make you look <laughs> brighter another one that's also very whitish is the shiseido expert sun um, lotion spf 50. they've released the physical sunscreen so mineral sunscreen of this version at least here here in the us and i assume that's even whiter than this one so i'm going to show you this one is good if you have look this is this is why uh this one is good if you have oilier skin or live in a warmer humid -er climate and this is good if you have very sensitive skin or not very sensitive i want to say moderately sensitive if you have very sensitive it might burn but moderately sensitive and you need a lot of moisture 
and um, you want uh, dewiness, then this is good, very, very good for that. Yes, that's. I'm very, very excited because they have released the exact same thing and it's alcohol free, irritant free and chemical sunscreen free. So it's also for baby uh, skin, but the same thing, like same formula, same anti-aging benefits, uh, same extreme waterproof, blah, blah, blah. So I'm very excited about that. Probably I might end up getting it for summer or something when I finish this one. and. I'll let you know. So yeah, here is the Shiseido. I'm not sure if you can really tell, but it does brighten the skin a little bit. So yes, that's true. The the Shiseido and pretty much every Japanese sunscreen is very good as primers. Um, I don't think that other companies or like let's say European or American brands are that good as uh, primers. They are very good sunscreens, but not that good or that beautiful as primers. So yeah. Um, doo -doo -doo. So what, what did I want to say? I don't know. Mouth is on my toes. It's trying to bite me. <laughs> what are you doing there? Anyways, I'm putting this aside. Oh, another thing that I want to mention. La Roche-Posay came out with Antelius Mineral Sunscreen, but it's actually also a primer. Now, I want to warn you that this is actually slightly dark because it's tinted and they don't have the untinted version. I assume because nobody or very little people would want to wear a silicone white thick paste so that's why they added the tint to it um, it's good as a primer but I'm actually returning it because it's too dark and they didn't have testers but I mean it's pretty neat that they released a mineral primer because so far they there is only pretty much only chemical based primers so this is just titanium dioxide thick paste primer so 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 okay let's talk about some correctors and some of the goodies that I went to check to Sephora to show you guys so as you might have seen from the title new foundation this is from Josie Marin. It's the Vibrancy Argan Oil Foundation Fluid Foundation. Or oh, Foundation Fluid. That's weird. And the shade that I got is the lightest. So it's Dynamic RG5. Their shading system is that R is red and G is golden. So this is sort of like a neutral, maybe, yeah, neutral um, combination of those. Then I got samples. So... I have the Tarte Rainforest of the Sea Concealer in Fair. Then I have the Tarte Rainforest of the Sea uh, Water Foundation in Fair Neutral. I have the ST Edit. So basically, ST Lauder has come out with a new brand targeted more to younger people, and they have new uh, new foundations. So I asked for a sample of the Skin. Skin what? <laughs> I have no idea what skin glam, skin gloam. I don't know. Whatever it is written there. Skin gloam glam bomb in the shade 001 vanilla. I, I swear it was 100, but whatever. And then this is the very interesting thing, which is the Algenist Reveal Correct concentrated correcting drops in blue so this unlike the others that they sell at sephora that are either color correcting primers or color correcting powders this actually can be mixed with the foundation so they are drops and they have four different undertones of drops and this happens to be blue which i was very interested in getting because it actually brightens the skin a lot then two other goodies that I'm going to be trying out and showing you how to 
use or potential uses and this is this skin naked skin color correcting fluid and it's in the color lavender whoops the reason why I got a lot of lavender is that lavender on pale skin really brightens a lot it really does uh, there is um, yeah, the Algenis drops are very pricey. I mean, I'm not sure I would purchase them myself, but they are like, they are, over Algenis is quite pricey, especially if you're looking at the serums and things like that. And the other thing is the Becca Backlight Targeted Color Corrector in Violet. This is what the packaging looks like, and this is what the product looks like. It's actually a lavender with a slight sheen or pearly undertone or whatever. So, yeah, I have that. Those are the new things that I'm going to be trying out. And then I have other things that I wanted to still talk about because I seem to talk a lot. And I'm going to just lift the... Anyways, yeah, I'm not sure if one of the viewers is back. She lost uh, the image and the sound with the Wi-Fi. That's why I was waiting. Anyway, so I got some color correctors to discuss about here for pale skin. And then I'll be picking a few that I'll be showing you guys how to use it. So, so, so. First one is from, of course, MAC. This is a palette probably you can, it's not a pro product, so you can probably get it much more easier than a pro product, but it has pro products in here. So the ones that I'm interested in talking about is the pale yellow and pale pink. So this is for a pale, paler skin. So this is W10 to give you a reference. So they are pretty pale. So we have pale pink and pale, uh, pale pink and pale yellow. Now, if you're very, very pale, you don't want to use green concealers in order to cancel out redness. That's just, um, it will add more sullenness to your skin. It will be harder to blend with your concealers. And also it might show through with your uh, foundation because the foundation, the lighter it is, the easier that correctors show through. So therefore, I would personally not use green on uh, if you're NCNW uh, less than 13 all the way down. Hello back. <laughs> Hello, glad you were able to make it. So yeah, if you have redness that you need to correct, I would say you are better off with a pale yellow so basically something that would look like a concealer shade for your skin but has a little bit more of a yellow undertone and if you have some blue under your eyes then i would say a pale pink would be a best bet although under the eyes you can use darker correctors because you can uh, apply you know more concealers and work it more uh, and whatnot but if you have like acne or rosacea and you apply some kind of green product there and then you try to blend it off with your foundation it will just look a hot mess <laughs> it won't be nice i do have green ones which i've used but i did not use it to um correct redness i actually use it to add more green to a foundation so again these are all correctors that could be used for multiple purposes, but this palette is not necessarily the friendliest for 
pale skin like to just use on an everyday basis so that's why i was showing this one because this is much easier to use and it has good coverage and uh, lasts on all day now for other correctors there are the laura mercier ones so this this one is more of a creamy base so you have to set it probably it's basically it's the same thing as the mac full coverage foundation but in a palette form and these ones are more drier type so this is what it looks like this is the mauve and um mauve pink so according to Larmers here, one is for fair skin and the other one is for um, more darker olive skin. But I would say both of them are usable if you have fair skin. It just depends on the undertone of, the, of your under eye uh, circles or it also depends on your undertone of your skin. And... Um, what kind of finish uh, you want to achieve yeah they are very dark and that's precisely the point because they are trying to really cancel out the undertone that you're having under your eyes but then on top of this you will have to use your concealer so let me show you let's go with the, this one so I'm taking a little bit here Oh, as you can see, they are very, very dark. Very dark. They are also, I believe, waxed base. So I'm trying to shear them out because you would not apply this quantity under your eyes. Like, you need to blend it. So there we have two stripes. Then let's go with the technique that I was saying. <laughs> yeah, Muffy just did a flyby. He's doing many of those. <laughs> Let's take the white paint stick. Paint stick, not paint stick. Okay, paint. Well, I'm going to just put them on top. So here we have with the pink, and here we have with the orange. Then on top of that, you would use your concealer. So you, I'm using just the Kevin Aquan one because it has a lot of coverage. So so of course, in my hand, you cannot really tell what's the, you know, the purpose because I mean, there is really nothing to correct here, but if you think about like, I'm gonna show you in a moment, like under eyes, you can really correct a lot uh, with this kind of technique. If you're very pale and you know, like regular correctors don't really cut it for you because you it might, in my opinion, like when you're very pale or when you're like very tanned, those two extremes, if you have like darkness under here, it can be very hard to get really fully concealed and brightened at the same time. If you're like a regular, I don't know, between NC and W25 to NC and W50 or 55, that might be easier to work with. But if you're like any darker than that or any paler than that, then it will be harder. So that's why I was saying white, stick white concealer is very helpful and pure colors or pure chromas are very very useful when you're trying to correct something under the eyes so i'm going to show you in a moment but another option if you need something to correct the redness you can for example have something of this type which is a concealer that's very yellow so this is just from Laura Mercier, the secret under eye concealer in 0.5. And this actually has very strong yellow undertones, so that can also work. But I would not use green. Unless you're really prepared to work a lot to conceal it, I think that it's more problematic to use green because 
then throughout the day as the foundation sort of thins out a little bit and I don't know something it might melt somewhere or crack the green spot might start to show through so you might actually look like a rotten you know rotten mushroom or something so <laughs> it might not really look pretty another one that's easy to use for the under eye is from Becca and it's the under eye brightening corrector so this is sort of like a pink so many I want to say bisque bisque color and this bisque color has also a shimmer so it's sort of like a multi-purpose product because you can use it under concealer on top of concealer or mixed with the concealer or on its own so there you can see that's the product so this is another option but you really need to set it very well because it's very creamy uh -uh -um. yeah the the lighter you are whatever blemish you might have or you know veins or any like natural darkness like I sleep very well I've had this ever since I was born it's just like I have this natural darkness here if for example when I was a kid and I was swimming a lot outside and I got a little bit tan they wouldn't be noticeable anymore so this is just because it's so fair the color that they actually show through so it's not necessarily like you have an issue it's just that the there is very little pigmentation on the skin to cover those veins and uh, small capillaries and whatnot that you have. Another option, this you can buy at MAC. Here I'm just giving you options and along the way if I have something or I remember something interesting to say about then I'll... Well, there is this. Okay. So, again, this is a pure orange. This is very good if you have, um, probably not for me today, but if they get like more darker than this, then this also is very good. You can conceal a lot. If you have, I don't want to say in women, but I know that for men, for example, if they want to conceal, you know, some darkness because of the, you know the hair follicles even if they're shaved I would use, use this on top or if you have a um, big melasma to cover or a big birthmark this would also work this as you can see this is a green but this is as green as I would suggest to go this is sort of like a very very pale green it's not a pure green because it has some yellow undertones but still this is more problematic to work with than a pale uh, yellow and this is again a pale pink <coughs> um another thing yes the skin unfortunately does get thinner as you get older but that's why um peptides are very useful because they help to um add thickness to the uh, skin so that's at least a reason why I use peptides and it does help with the under eye darkness because it sort of like with time you don't see like in a week you might see in a year uh, it does add a little bit more substance to your under eyes by I don't know the collagen or the skin thickness or something uh, green won't work on olive skin. I mean, <laughs> you will look a bit silly if you apply green. <laughs> Another option, if you don't want the stick for your under eyes. Now this you have to double check again, but it's from Illamasqua and is the concealer in CC 105. So basically this is the same uh, thing as the Illamasqua, the big compact, but in a concealer format. So this is good again to brighten. Uh, oh yeah, the Algenist is the eye balm. Yeah, that one is very good. It has 
peptides and a lot of good things in there. I just finished mine, so I have another one, but it's very, very good. Um, so that's, I think that's everything for the correctors. So maybe I'll start showing you instead of just talking all the time. <laughs> and also, the serum. Um, yeah, I know which one you're referring to, but I don't... Is this the power serum from Algenist? Could be. I don't remember. Anyways, <coughs> I'll be starting off by doing a little mix here and there of things. So let's see if I can see properly. There. So I'm not very. I don't really follow that much rules where to put what. I just put stuff where I feel like I want to put it. So <laughs> probably not the smartest, but whatever. Let's see if I can see better with this. Yeah. So I'm grabbing a little bit of the violet, and I'm gonna actually mix. Do I want to mix that? Where is it? Oh my goodness, where are you? So I'm going to grab a little bit of the violet from the Becca, the new one, and then a little bit of the pink one from um, Laura Mercier. And sorry, I have to put my glasses to read. <laughs> Teacher. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you say so. Anyways, this I will just use on the outer corners in order to add a little bit brightness, and this... I'll use to conceal the whatever little darkness I have going on here. And I prefer to, like, I can blab a lot about the products, but I prefer to show you so that you can see actually what it does rather than me telling. So I would actually apply this wherever I have, you know, that deep purple or deep green type of color. So if you have green, you can also try the, oh my gosh, I'm losing, uh, the orange one. That's also very good. I would start with pink, of course. And if pink doesn't do the trick, then move on to orange or red uh, base. So I have here, I have a vein that's going through here. And sometimes it's showing more, sometimes less. So sometimes it's like going all the way here. <laughs> Very funny. Um, so yeah, this is how I would place this like very dark pink mauve color. And I'm wiping off. And I, by the way, I'm using the Bobbi Brown concealer. I really like this. Um, brush because it's very like thin and precise it's almost like a lip brush slightly thicker and it's very easy to place the product under eyes now i'm taking the whoops i'm taking a little bit too much the uh violet from becca this is the first time i'm using the violet so i'm not really sure yet how i'm gonna like it But as you can see, it's adding a lot of brightness just by adding that violet. Now I'm taking the white from the paint stick from um, MAC, so pure white. I know a lot of people use this actually to conceal, uh, sorry, to, yeah, to conceal the eyelid in order to add vibrant colors. I personally don't like it that way because it creases a lot because it's such a greasy thick formula yeah that's true the violet one opened the eyes and although this isn't marketed as such it says that it's for you know wherever you have solo areas on your face I mean it's 
can be used under the eyes. That's not the problem. But the thing is that when I was looking at Sephora, they have these counters where they say like each color is where they go. And they weren't really mentioning it under the eyes. I assume that if you're tanned, this might not really look that nice under the eyes. It might look ashy. But if you're very pale, I find that lavender colors just brighten up the eye so much. Basically, I'm just adding white until I'm like happy with the lightness. As you can see, I'm just building up on the white. Now, if I can find my brush. If you can wait a minute, I'm gonna go grab my brush. It's on the reading room. So I'm using this brush because I still haven't got a beauty blender. I'm not yet touching the area where there is the purple because I don't really want to mix them together. Now I'm going to add a little bit more of the violet. Actually, I wasn't really sure what to think of the violet one. Because it's the first time I'm using such thing. I mean, they didn't have this kind of stuff before. But I must say that I'm really, really, really impressed at how much it's brightening the under eyes. Because you see here, I don't really need color correcting. It's just, there is some slight bluish undertone, but I don't really mind it. So that's why I picked the violet, because it's not as stark as applying white there especially when you're then blending with your foundation but it still gives some kind of light boost now which concealer do i want to use mm -mm. i'm gonna grab one from concealer box here there we go. I'm going to use the Ultra HD because I don't want to cake on that much more. I mean, the white has already brightened the corrector that much, so I don't really need a lot of uh, coverage there. I hope you can see right what I'm doing. I know that maybe the quality of the video isn't that great. Now, I have still a little bit of, um, how to say, darkness here, not because of the color, but because my eyes are such that they're sunken in there. So I'm going to add just a little bit of the violet in there, and then I'm going to blend it with the whatever is left of the concealer. So I'm not sure if you can see the difference. I haven't darkened the area, although I've used something so dark. And I personally don't want to fully correct the eyes because I'm not having a very heavy makeup. So 
basically how much coverage you want under your eyes depends also on the type of makeup that you're going to do. If you're going to have very dramatic eyes and you need all the attention to be on the eyelid area or you have very dramatic contouring, very heavy makeup, strong lip color, whatever, then you might want to really fully cover. So that's why in that case I would have put something like the Kevin Aquan, which is a thick, this is actually the concealer type foundation which is the sensual skin enhancer sx01 but in this case i'm not interested in that that's why i chose the ultra hd my outer corner have lilac pink visible veins and my eyes make my eyes to look droopy what color outer corner here you mean here you have a uh, pink visible veins. Is it the same tone as what I have here? Hello, Aga. Don't worry. It's okay. <laughs> I've already been rambling for 90 minutes, so no worries if you're late. It's really no problem. Well, if you have like this kind here, I would definitely use something like the pink. I and if you don't have anything here, then you can use something like this in order to brighten it. Let me go closer. There. There you can see the violet. I haven't really put anything, any concealer. So this is just this thing here. More pink here, lilac. Again, I would try with either like this or orange and then some white and then a thick concealer. Um, the lilac, well, if... Again, this is, as you can see, is very sheer. It doesn't cover that much, but it brightens it. So for every day, if you just want to brighten a little bit, then you can maybe try with something like this. Or I have another option from Urban Decay, which I'm going to try out now. So on this eye, I'll use... How about I use the orange so you can see what the orange does because that's my point here. I want to show you guys what you can achieve with this kind of product. So I'm taking this. It looks very scary. And again, I'm applying it just where I have darkness. So basically I have here. And here and I try to stay within the areas where I have that darkness there I'm gonna be applying this afterwards so now I'm just going with the white paint stick and sorry if um, every time I try to read, because I don't have my glasses, I have to come very close to the camera. So I'm using the white paint stick from MAC. So this would give more of a peachy corrector. And I just wanted a hair lighter, but not really considerably much. I'm going to take the other brush and blend it.
I hope you can see there the result. So again, both of them will work well for this kind of like under eye darkness if you're fair. The difference that I would say is that it depends on the undertone of your skin and it also depends on um, what result you want. So this one is giving a warmer result than this one. This is more of a cooler tone and this is a warmer tone. Now it's really up to preference what you might like. If you have a lot of blue, like really strong blue, I would not go with the orange because it might make it look greenier. But if you have already very green under eye circles, I might go with this one or very, very strong pink red under eye circles. Now I'm going to be using the Naked Skin uh, in Lavender. This, by the way, has peptides in it. And with this one, I'm actually applying it all over, or not all over, but in strategic places. I might have over applied, I'm not sure. We'll see. There. Now I'm going to blend it. And, sorry, now I'm going to be applying the same concealer as uh, the other side, which is the, this one. And you want to make sure to blend using your fingertips, especially under the eyes, because um, correctors and concealers need the warmth in order to um, properly emulsify and blend. And there you have. So this one was with the Naked Lavender and the Orange um, Corrector and this one was the with the Mauve Pink Corrector and the Becca Backlight. Both have the same white paint stick and the same concealer on top. So it really depends on your preference both will do their job. Um, I'm trying to look at it and see if I can find any. This one will uh, cover more. So if you really require more coverage for brightening, then this is a better option than the Becca Backlight. The Becca Backlight, I think it's very beautiful. Um, it has sort of like a translucent type of finish, which I personally like. Um, this one, maybe it brightens a little bit more, but that's because I have the combination of this and the orange. Um, let me think. Maybe. Maybe this side is better for a daytime, and this side would be better if you have a higher coverage 
foundation. So this seems to give more of a brightness, Sli slightly more. It's not necessarily that much of a difference. Like if you're very picky, of course, you might see the difference, but otherwise, I don't know. I don't. I don't see that huge of a difference. So, okay. Now moving on to other parts of the face. <laughs> mm, the YSL one is sheerer. If you're talking about the YSL, they released a lavender and a green and a pink one. If you're talking compared to those. I would choose this one because it has more coverage. It also has the peptides, which for me it's always a bonus. But if you're talking to the regular Touche Eclat, they are very different. The Touche Eclat tend to have um, yellower, pinkier undertones, so you're just comparing lavender to another undertone. But if you're comparing it to the violet lavender one from YSL, I prefer this one. And also, this has more product and is cheaper than the YSL. Okay, so for face, I already have sunscreen, which is sort of my primer. And I'm gonna be playing around a little bit with the Algenist um, Reveal Concentrated Correct, Reveal Concentrate Correcting Drops in Blue. And after this, I'll be swatching out these three new ones for you guys. And I'll be also trying out the new Vibrancy Foundation so that you can see how it is. So let's see where are my... I'm sorry if you hear like a bling or bling, it's just my phone going off like messages, so I apologize about that. So, I have here, I'm going to be using this, and I'm going to be using also pale yellow. So, I'll just show you with the white one, you can achieve a lot of stuff, so. So basically I'm applying it where I have a lot of redness. And then I'm going to be using the Algenist drops in certain areas where I might have salonis. So it's very liquid. And also, another thing I want to mention is that when you're pale and you have redness, you don't necessarily need to correct that redness, but the redness can sort of give a darkness to certain areas. So what you want to do is add something that would lighten that area. So I have a lot of redness here. Um, I have a little bit here, so I'm adding a bit. So you don't necessarily need to correct anything unless you have like really big acne problem. If you just have redness, then you can go on with something like this that would brighten the area and then when you apply your foundation it would um, blend in better uh, 
I'm not sure if that's making a lot of sense for you guys. It's not really correcting anything because I'm or concealing anything because I'm not trying to conceal here. I'm just trying to add lightness and well, brightness in certain areas because when you're pale any redness or blemish, what it does, it darkens your skin, so it makes it look uneven, maybe dull, maybe tired. But you don't necessarily need to remove the undertone, you just need to brighten that area. And now I'm going to be using the Josie Marin one. I don't know how it is. I mean, I saw it yesterday at the counter, so there it is. I'm going to be showing you a swatch in a moment. I saw it at a counter yesterday and I was like, okay, I'm going to try this. I don't know how it is, so we'll see. And I'm using the... Yes, that's true. The uh, pale blue on fair skin is really, along with the pale lavender, they are the only two colors that can brighten the skin, like, beautifully, I want to say. I don't know how how good this foundation is. I'm using this brush because um, this is the brush that I use for reviewing foundations or when I want to have accurate foundation finish. This gives me the most coverage for a foundation, I mean this brush. So that's why I use this one when I want to see how a foundation is. Again, I don't know. It smells like argan oil and it also feels like argan oil, so if you're not a fan of any of those, probably this you will not like. It doesn't have fragrance in it, so that's why the argan oil comes in very strongly. It's uh, This is Josie Maran. There you go. I'm not sure about it yet. Um, I probably have to play around with this foundation a little bit more. Oh, the brush, sorry, it's a uh, real techniques. It's the buffing brush, it comes in a kit and they are relatively cheap for brushes. I don't know how I'm liking it. It's gathering a little bit on the corners of my nose. Not really sure. Um, yes, definitely dewy because I mean, if you think about it, it's basically there is an oil in here. So I don't think this is the best foundation to um, correct, you know, to do all that correction beforehand because it's so much of an oily base that the corrector underneath will not stick, you know, like this will melt off with oil. So probably I would not use this one. And by the way, my ears are naturally red that's why it looks like off because i have very red ears there you go this is the foundation 
Let me check. Well, I don't want to scratch. I don't want to scratch. Oh my gosh. Maybe I have to play around with um, different like sunscreens and primers and figure out which one would be. But I'm going to be showing you guys which shade it is because it's easier for me to show. So I'm going to be putting W10. This is W10. And the Josie Marin. This is the Josie Marin. So I would say that it's a hair lighter than MAC Full Coverage W10. Maybe. There go. Maybe I'm trying to think because this is neutral. So maybe NCNW08 or something like that. Just the hair lighter. Sorry, I'm just cleaning up my lips. I can't stand where my lips are. Anyways, um, this looks like a very natural finish foundation. Um, it says it's full coverage, but I mean, you can still see some of the redness. So I would not call this a full coverage foundation. but definitely medium, medium high coverage. So that's that. Also, it says that it's um, very, very good for, here it says 93% um, in a consumer study agreed vibrancy helped visibly calm their skin condition, specifically scarring, inflammation, and rosacea. So if you have any of these problems, this is supposedly very good for that. Now, what am I going to show you? Yeah, okay, so let's put the swatches here so you can see. So, for reference, I have very pigmented lips for my skin tone, so it might look that I'm actually wearing something, but actually there is nothing. So yeah, here is, let me close the blinds a little bit. It's getting too bright. Okay, let's see. Now, so there is um, MAC Full Coverage W10 and MAC Full Coverage NC15. There. Now I'm going to start with the Tarte Rainforest of the Sea Water Foundation in the palest shade that they have. Oh my goodness. The girl said that this is extremely pale, but I'm not seeing that. Yeah, like I was saying, that ain't pale. <laughs> oh my goodness, she said that it was like the fairest that she had ever like the girl working at Sephora she was telling me she looked very fair she was telling me that this is the best match that she's had and it's very hard for her to find and well I, I don't I don't think this is dark like this is darker than Mac NC15 this is maybe well this is if you are studio fix fluid NC15 the uh, Tarte uh, Rainforest of the Sea water foundation in fair neutral will suit you but i mean this isn't she said snow white i don't know where is the snow white in this i mean this is tanned for me i i would be, this is like self tanner 
three layers of self tanner in the darkest formula type of color. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's just unbelievable. Actually, let me use a little bit of powder on my face so that almond milk, yeah, uh, darker. What have I done on my lips? I must have accidentally touched something. By the way, I'm using this one from Chanel. Because I forgot that I must set this, otherwise it's gonna just... just disappear. And um, I'm gonna add a little bit of this. Sorry about that, but I just, whoops, can't stand not having some kind of color on my face. This is the, this one, the Shimmer Brick from Bobbi Brown in Nectar. Um, if there would be one product from Bobbi Brown that I would recommend, it's this Nectar Shimmer Brick thingy. Okay, do I have some lip balm? Oh, another thing that I really enjoy from Algenist is their lip balm. I think it's very good and it has SPF and peptides and, and stuff. <laughs> Anyways, now we can continue. I don't look dead. <laughs> mm, so we've concluded this one was way too dark. I don't know in what kind of planet that's pale, but I mean, that's the surprising thing. For example, Kat Von D. She uses the shade 44, or no, sorry, shade 46, I think. And that shade looks extremely, extremely tanned on me. And the lighter shade still looks extremely tanned. So I'm not really sure. Maybe it's the contrast from dark hair. I don't know. But yeah, anyways. Tarte Rainforest of the Sea. This is the concealer in Fair. So here we have MAC Full Coverage W10, MAC Full Coverage NC15. And I'm going to try and see. Well, they actually put a lot of this. Okay, so the concealer isn't as bad. So there we go. That's the concealer. Mm, it, remind, it smells a lot like the MAC... Um, Pro Longwear Concealer. So as you can see, it's very close to NC15. Maybe it's NC, or actually NC and W between 13 and 15. So for me, it's very surprising that those are called pale because they... Yeah, yeah, I know that. <laughs> Where is the other one? I have another one. Here it is. So last one to swatch is the the ST ST Edit Skin Glowing, I suppose, balm in 001 vanilla. So this is supposed to be the palest that they have. We'll see. We'll see, we'll see. There we go. Okay, so this is a pretty thick consistency. Oh, it's actually a balm. That's funny. Oh, okay, that's actually not a bad choice, but anyways, this is very, very, I mean, the texture is very good. This is actually NCNW12, I would say, because this is W10, this is NC15, and uh, yeah, this is definitely, it's between those two, so... NCNW12, 
something. So actually, that's not that bad. So yeah, those were the things that I had to swatch. And um, already been rambling for two hours, so now I'm going to be going on with the rest of the foundation cell. I would suggest that if you're interested in any of these products, just email me almost right away or like before I put up all the prices so that you can be more sure that you might get what you want. Now, uh, you have to give me like 10 days or so for me to be able to chip them because I still have to do the swatch thingy for most of them. So yeah, let's get started. So we are at the two hour mark, so yay, Justin, oh hey, you made it. <laughs> So, uh, for the past two hours, basically, it's been me rambling, just showing how to apply certain correctors and some tips and tricks and some of the newest foundation. By the way, I'm wearing the Josie Maran Vibrancy uh, foundation, which is new, and the shade RG5 Dynamic. So, I just wanted to show you in case you've missed that. That's what I'm wearing. And it's about an NC NW08 or something like that. So, the sale. <laughs> First one that I have is from YSL. It's a Le Teint Touche Eclat Illuminating Foundation Dimensional Radiance Weightless Perfection. Why do they have such long names for foundations? <laughs> oh my gosh, that's, that's just absurd. Like, next thing you know, every time they reformulate it, they must add, like, more names. So we'll end up having, like, this long name. Anyways, this is shade B10 Beige. This is what it looks like. So I'm going to be doing, again, the swatch thingy. Because I think this helps most people make a decision. I speak French. <laughs> My father speaks French, so at home we spoke French. And um, usually when I'm trying to read these things, like to non-French speaking people, I don't want to speak, like, use the full accent, because then, I mean, it probably most will not understand what I'm trying to say. But, yeah, that's my point. But I speak French. <laughs> Anyways, this is that, and we have, as always, MAC Full Coverage, W10 MAC Full Coverage, NC15. This has medium coverage, so there you go. It is definitely more of a peachy NC10, close to NC10, I would say. And it has sort of peachy neutral undertones. And it gives a medium coverage, and it's very, very glowy. And I would say out at least 80% left. So that's that. Um, Muffy, is it okay if I put it here on your playground? Okay. Next. Um, this one already put for sale. Yeah, I forgot about that. That one was already for sale. That one was already. Oh, sorry. I just mixed up the foundations. That's. I'm just silly. Yes, that's true. Because in Canada, you actually there is a part that you speak French. Sorry, I'm trying to. Look at what actually I did put on sale. <laughs> I'm really a very unorganized person. 
Oh my gosh, no, not that one. Okay, that one I put, uh, did I put? No, okay. So this one is the Kat Von D Lock It Tattoo Foundation shade Light 44. So this is the second lightest. Um, it has a tiny, I don't know if it's supposed to be there, but it has a tiny crack, I think, from when I dropped it. This is extreme coverage, um, like really, 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 really high coverage. There you go. This is good if you have um, NC17 or something like that. It's also extremely long wear, and I would say that there is at least 80% left in there. This one, I remember I put it up for sale, so... Yep, that was already up. Did I put the Dolce & Gabbana? Yep. Oh my goodness. I'm terrible at this. Next is the cover effects in shade N0. This is the Total Cover Cream Foundation SPF 30. This is the Pella shade that cover effects makes. So basically you would have this much left. I'll, of course, sanitize it before sending out to you guys, but I don't really have any clean brushes and my hands just, I wiped them off on a sanitizer, so. There you go. This is actually, I want to say NC07. So this is the closest thing to white that probably you can get without it being totally white. What is it, Muff? So, comes with the packaging, um, full coverage, you can use it as concealer or as foundation, you can achieve extreme coverage or you can achieve a sheer, sheer coverage. What is it, Moth? You want to come here? Come here. Want to come here? Come here. Yeah, I'm sorry. He was feeling like wanting a little bit of attention. Okay. What's the matter? What's the matter? Now I'm going to give you attention in a moment. Um, I would say it's more of a neutral undertone. So it goes either ways. It doesn't have very strong yellow undertones or very strong pink undertones. It's neutral. Next one is Coverderm, again, very, very high coverage, and yeah, yeah, he's like, me, you haven't given me attention for two hours, <laughs> kind of situation now. <laughs> yeah, so this is the Coverderm, Coverderm, perfect face, perfect cover, waterproof makeup, and it's in the shade one. Oh my goodness. This is again very, very thick, very, very coverage, very, very covering, not coverage. Oh my goodness. There you go. This is a bit lighter than uh, W10, so I would say NW08 or so. This is very good for if you have any kind of you know, birthmark you want to cover, a lot of acne scarring, acne discoloration, or something like that. This definitely has more of pink undertones. And there is, I would say, at least 85%, if not 90% left. <laughs> He's looking like, oh, what are you grabbing now? <laughs> yeah, look at this. I'm gonna show this one, you know. 
Okay, whatever. Next one is the Corridon Classic. So this has, it's more of a even thicker paste than the previous one. And it's in the shade 01 and it's 24 hour lasting. So this lasts very long, as long as you set it properly. So this is how much is left. So basically 95% or more. And this is the color. So this is good for NCNW 12, 13, somewhere there. NCNW 12, 13. See, you're adorable. Yeah? Yeah, let my face be. I'm not eating my foundation now. Don't worry. <laughs> He's having me the whole day, so there is really no problem, right? <laughs> He's trying to clean me now. Anyways, this is also very good if you want to cover. It's very good concealer, high coverage, yada yada. Next is, did I put actually this one on sale? Yep, this one was on sale, so out. Next is a NYX Twin Cake, uh, Twin Cake Powder, and it's the CP01 Pale. Uh, actually, Coverderm, it's pretty popular in Europe, and it's sort of, I think it's from Italy. Yeah, it's from Italy. And it's basically meant for, you know, if you have a lot to cover. Where did you go? Okay, bye. <laughs> yeah, so this is the NYX powder. This is, I mean, technically it's almost white. And... Um, Let's see if you can see. There it is. So this is like NC, or no, sorry, NW05. This is white with something. Yeah, hide and seek. What is it? Come here now. Then don't, don't cry. I don't know if you can hear him. He's like, me, me. Some kind of sound like that. <laughs> Next is the uh, Guerlain Lingerie, Lingerie de Peau. <laughs> See, probably not easy to understand, but it's the Invisible Skin Fusion Foundation. And the shade is 01. This is the color. So this is very close to NC15. So if you're NC15 and you want this, then there's that. I think that there is at least 80% left in this one. Okay, so, so far there is this one, so I'm putting this one on the side for you. If you want another thing that's NW05, by the way, I'm gonna clean up my arm. I'm getting like this redness, so I have to move it to this spot here. <laughs> um, another thing that's very, very pale, doesn't have a lot of pigment, but it's very pale, is the Avida Mineral Tinted Moisture in shade 00 Sheer. So this is, I would say white. It's technically white, but there you go. You can, like, it's a tinted moisturizer, so that's what it does. So this is basically white. If anyone is interested in this one, you better grab it soon because Probably those ones will be the popular, like the very white ones. Okay, <laughs> I'm putting it there. Um, <clears throat> I have two that are drugstore, so this one's basically 
I would gladly send them for free if you like purchase something else like with the shipping that you pay um, it's from Rimmel and I have the lasting finish 25 hours nude in 091 light ivory there so this is like NW between NW10 and NW11 12 something like that and then I have the match perfection SPF 18 radiance foundation in 010 light porcelain This is basically close to NW10, or it's an NW10. Then this one, it's in not the greatest condition, which is why I would, again, give it for free if uh, you're paying for the shipping or purchasing something else and it's the Clinique Super Moisture Makeup in 01 per Pure Porcelain. This, why I liked it is because again it's very moisturizing and it has tiny shimmery particles. It smells like MAC Studio Fix Fluid so just letting you know. There it is. So this is basically like an NW um nw 13 14. the cover effects was n0 so it's the lightest shade they make um they make then uh, with gold undertones and pink undertones other shades but they are darker so yeah that's that one this is again these two are almost 90 percent full this one, I would say 80% full, if not more. Then from Vichy, which is a French uh, pharmaceutical brand or pharmacy brand, Vichy is the Dermal Blend Ultra, Correct, Ultra Corrective Foundation Cream Stick in the shade, I swear, I had, in the shade Porcelain 11. The cover effects is very 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 close to NW05 so maybe I mean it's almost white so I want to say that it's very close to NW5 so this is the stick this is how much is left so basically I've used very almost nothing of it ah, let's do it to draw it. There you go. So again, this is Mac Full Coverage W10 NC15, and this is the Vichy Stick in 11 Porcelain. So this is something like an NC, a little bit peachier than NC, but around NC12, something like that. It's again very high coverage, is meant to cover blemishes, birthmarks, whatever you need heavy duty for. Next, I have the Bobbi Brown BB Cream SPF 35 in extra light. Let's see, are you gonna? Okay. This probably 80% left from what I can feel. So the extra light is just a hair lighter than NC15. So if you're NC14, something like that, NC14 to NC15, it would suit well. This has a medium coverage and it can be used as a primer as well. So that's something interesting to keep in mind. Sorry, I'm gonna just go back all the foundations here. Oh, 
Whoops. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Another one, uh, Clinique Even Better Makeup SPF 15 in 01 Alabaster. This, there isn't that much left, so I'll gladly ship it with your order if you want to pay for the shipping. So this is around NC, NC15. Here we have more. So Peter Thomas Roth Unwrinkle Foundation in shade Light. There is, I want to shake it so, there is approximately this much left. So there you go. This is an NC09. So I would say for this one, if you're NC, 08 to NC10, you could pull it off very well. It doesn't have extreme coverage, so it's more of a medium. Um, you can shear it out as well. It has peptides, vitamins. Yeah, it's like a good for your skin type of foundation. These two, again, I'll gladly ship for free if you're ordering something or you want to pay for shipping. So this is um, Illuminare Fantastic Finish Oil-Free Foundation in Almalfi Alabaster. This is a high pigment foundation, so you only need a little bit. There it is. This is actually NC. This has strong yellow undertones, so it's around NC... What could I say? It's lighter than... 10 so around nc 7 8 something like that and there is about half left but this is like very thick consistency so you don't really need that much of it and the other one is the age rewind by maybelline porcelain ivory Sorry, I'm trying to grab off the cap. There you go. And this is an NW10. Also smells similar to Max Studio Fix Fluid for some reason. Next is a discontinued product and it's from Givenchy and it's the Skin Tonic Stretch Cream Foundation Instant Rejuvenating and Lift Effect in the shade 501 Lift Dragé. Or Dragé. Really. The packaging is beautiful though. And this is almost completely full. I never wore it. Or, well, not never wore it. I wore it only like a couple of times. I'm trying to grab from the cap so I won't. There we go. This is actually NW10. It has very pinkish undertones. And there is, like I was saying, something like... Um, I mean, 90% left, more, 95. So it's almost full. This is sort of like a medium coverage. It has sort of like very glowy finish and... Um, like they say, it has a bit of a lifting finish. So, yeah. I mean, it oxidizes slightly, but if you blend it, it should be okay. But Peter Thomas Roth is very beautiful, actually. But the thing is that I have so many that I think that they're beautiful, that I like them, but I cannot possibly wear all of those. That there is no time for those, and I, I'm like always looking at new ones, so therefore I have to get clean up the junk a little bit. 
Now this one is another extremely pale one. This is almost white. This is impossible to find anymore. It's the Nicola Roberts Dainty Doll Foundation by Jelly Pong Pong in the shade Ivory. I don't want to swatch this because I don't want to dip. I, I mean, I'm going to do a proper swatch of this, but you probably, it's a very silicone type of finish. It fills in the pores, so it's sort of like a silicone primer, but it has a little bit more coverage than that. And this is an, it has pinkish undertones, I won't lie. Um, but once blended on the face, it just brightens the skin a lot. And this is good if you're NW or NC05 to NW, NC07 or something like that. This is very, very, very fair. I mean, I could swatch it, but probably you can see from here how pale this is. Rachel K discontinued. They reformulated it for some reason. This was the palest that they had. And it's the Mineral Control Original CC Cream. Well, the Givenchy does work for me, but I prefer if I have foundations like way higher coverage. And uh, I tend to prefer less pink undertones, but that's just my personal preference. This is the Racial K. This has very strong pink undertones, which is, again, very rare for CC cream from Asia. And this is good if you're NW08 to NW10, but I've seen women of NW... Uh, Thirty wearing this in order to brighten their foundation, so it can be worn. That ain't the problem. There's that, and this probably there is seventy percent left, if not a little bit more. There is an almost new one from Too Faced. Yeah, exactly. I have restless foundation syndrome because I cannot stay with one. That's that's just too hard. I can't. <laughs> I just, I can't. <laughs> so this is a Too Faced Air Buffed BB Cream Complete Coverage Makeup in the shade Snow Glow. It comes with the mini Kabuki brush, which is so friggin' cute, I think. Oh my goodness. You know, you can buff your foundation with this. Actually, that's the sole reason why I got this. Can you believe that? I was like, that's too cute. Uh, I didn't really wear it. <laughs> this is a foundation. I just tested it, like swatched it. Um, it's very sheer. Like, you can probably buff a lot of coverage, but there it is. So this is NC... NC11 to NC13. You can probably pull it off. I mean, if you blend it, that's where you have. So this is very, 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 very pretty. Oh my gosh, so cute. <laughs> it's so cute. Here it says that it primes, it conceals, it mattifies, brightens, and protects. This is actually discontinued. So... And the sunscreen, if you're asking, it's mineral sunscreen, it's titanium dioxide. What's the matter, Muffy? Why are you... Muffy has a thing, because we're facing a window and he can actually see the streets. And he has a thing that if there are cars parking in a certain parking spots, he starts crying. Because he doesn't want that car parked there. Now, I can't change that. I mean, I can't go and tell the owner, like, you shouldn't park there because my canary bird doesn't want you to park there. They'll call probably mental health services or something. Like, Muffy, I can't do that. No, I can't. Next one, which 
I'll throw in for free if you pay the shipping. It's not in the, I will warn, it's not in the greatest condition. It's slightly greedy, which when I got it, it was greedy. So that's, I don't understand if it's like this or whatever. It smells very good. Um, if you blend it in, once you blend it properly, I mean, there is no problem with the foundation. So anyways, this is, um, around NWNC 17, uh, 20. So if you're like 20, a bit over 20 or something like that, this is good for you. Um, which one you meant the, this one? I'm putting it aside for you, so uh, just, let's see, I think, I, I am seeing your email, so I can just put it on hold for you, there is no problem, I don't need to have, uh, do you want the um, Nicola Roberts one? those things okay yeah I'm putting those three that you told me on the email on the side don't worry I have two more so this one there isn't that much left so probably around I want to say half or maybe a bit less it's discontinued but it's probably one of the palest that Lancome ever came out with don't quote me on that one but I think it's the Taint Idol Fresh Wear uh, Shine Free Makeup and it's the shade Ivory 1C. So this is very good if you tend to have oily skin or you need, yeah, oil control. So there you go. This is around an NW07 to NW09. So anything in between there um, would work. And this has medium coverage. Um, well, the thing with the, the cover effects has very high coverage. The Dainty Doll doesn't have high coverage. It has very, very low coverage. So it really depends what you're looking for in the foundation. The, the Dainty Doll has more white pink undertones. Last one, I believe, is the Bobbi Brown Illuminating Finish Powder in Alabaster 00. There we go. Unfortunately, this happened with water. It said that you could mix it with water. It, it didn't. It didn't work. Anyways, this is the foundation. There it is. So it is. The powder is paler than uh, W10. So it's around NW7 something like that. You could make it work to NW10. So I think that's everything that I have for sale now. Yeah. That was it, actually, yeah. I don't really have anything else. Really? <laughs> Are there any questions? If you have any question, let me know. I'm gladly answering those. Mm, nobody has asked, so I'm putting those on the side for you, so I don't know who, who was, wait, who took what, I don't remember. Okay, let's see. Yeah, I think it's free, so I'm putting that one aside.
uh, lipstick sale or lipstick swatches because I have many lipsticks for sale but I didn't put them up online yet I have pictures so I can send the pictures I have like tons of other random stuff that I'm putting on sale that I'm I just grabbed pictures let's see here yeah I'll definitely actually I can since you have access to Sephora now they're having these um, radish um, yeah this bite beauty amuse amuse bouche which is a very funny name like French it means playing mouth lipstick anyways so this is in the color radish and it's the hundred point Kirk so I'm gonna try it off Um, I'm putting those four on hold for you and you can think about it and I can send you the swatch of the three of the four ones so you can see and compare well this is so tiny but One second, I'm going to be uh, putting plug in the computer, otherwise I'm going off. One second. Sorry. Oh my goodness. Yay. Yeah, this color is really, really wonderful. I love the bite lipstick. So I tried to, I was swatching it so you can see what it looks like because there are the new formulas from Bite Beauty. And I think that it feels very, very mm, creamy, if that makes sense. It's very slippery, but it's not like a lip gloss. It's almost like a lip balm. Yeah, usually I have the live stream at uh, 2 p.m. here. That For no reason, I just picked up that number. So that's why. <laughs> I'm sorry. If, um, like sometimes it doesn't suit everybody. I know that it's not a time that it might suit everybody. But yeah, I'll check. I'll send you the links of the... Not the links, the... To one of you, I'm going to send the swatches and we can talk more about the four foundations. So Ali, I can talk about those. Uh, they're reserved on the side, so no problem. Um, Marit, I'm going to... Did you ask me about the lipsticks? No. Uh, <laughs> that was Albino Hare, which I'm not sure if you want me to say your name, so I'm not going to say your name out here. <laughs> But um, I'm going to be sending out the pictures of everything else that I have on sale. If you're interested in checking, out, checking that out, there are a lot of lipsticks. And um, yeah, don't worry. I'm going to send you an email as soon as this is over and no problem. Mm, are there any other requests or questions? Well, actually, to let you know um, if any any one of you is interested, um, I had uh, got lip fillers on the upper lip because my uh, lip 
was uneven so the thing started closer here and the reason why I got it which wasn't to make my lips bigger because they don't really they don't look bigger at least not to me or nobody ever noticed but whenever I was drinking because my bottom lip was uh, larger than my top lip I would have like stuff dripping so it looked like it felt very stupid when I was in a restaurant trying to be all fancy and then I'm drinking and it's like Diet Coke drooling over my neck. So anyways, yeah, I got um, upper lip fillers, which of course also helps with the shape. I don't, I mean, I don't care. I just say it. <laughs> but that's, I got that done maybe, I would say two months ago. Not even that. So it's something very recent. Yeah, I have big lipstick lust. Let me show you. Um, I keep the lipsticks in such things like pretty lipsticks, pretty lipsticks. <laughs> Those are the lipsticks that I wear. And then I have the palettes. Those palettes that I made myself. Wee. <laughs> well, usually that happens to me too. Whenever I'm like, I want to purchase things and I'm like, oh, I want to buy all of this. Then there is something that I must like spend for like some birthday or some important thing that uh, I don't want to but I have to <laughs> wanna come say bye bye come here come here come say bye bye it's really fun yeah. are we gonna say bye bye no, 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 don't pick on my nose. No? Okay. The moment I'm done with this video, he's gonna start roosting and singing. I know it. Right? Are we leaving? Anyways, yeah. So I'll email you girls soon i think right see yeah we say bye bye why are you looking at me look there yeah he can like be on the camera for hours actually and um oh by the way what would you like to see for the next live stream if there is something like tutorial whatever i'm gladly talking about that and um we'll definitely see next friday at least Mm, I have what sorry it's I think the chat comes um, with a delay like when I'm talking like the chat doesn't uh, refresh that quickly for me so sometimes I'm like eh, I'm not sure what I should be answering
Today he's very calm, actually. That's sweet. He likes to clean my hand for some reason. I suppose I'm like a big canary bird. Oh, you meant the um, lip injection. Well, I don't know. Uh, my mom doesn't have that problem and she has like very thin lips. And I have quite large lips naturally. And for some reason, the top one was um, like starting inwards compared to the bottom. So every time I was drinking, everything was just drooling out of my mouth, which wasn't cute. <laughs> Not that it doesn't happen still. But anyways, I think now we're going to say bye-bye. Oh my goodness, you pooed. Yeah, you pooed. Yeah, you pooed. You don't need to remind me. Um, so let's see us at least next Friday. And I'll try to think of something that's cool to uh, talk about, if that's good. So... Me and Muffy, we're going to say bye-bye now. Bye-bye. And have a wonderful weekend. And I'll email you, all of you that I have to email. And, um, oh, I'll be in a hurry. Please email me because I'm still not on Instagram and I still need to send your stuff. And um, please email me. And, uh, yeah. Goodbye. Say bye-bye. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> See you later. Bye-bye.